Hi everyone, this is Don Gold, the art guy, bringing you another art video. Today I want to talk about watercolors and breaking the rules. Let's first begin by talking about some watercolor. I want to show you my watercolor sets. I want to show you some watercolor paintings. Then we'll talk about breaking the rules and we'll end today with what you need to know about watercolor paper. Watercolors, as you know, are elusive, swirling, and magical. Watercolor is a freewheeling, happy medium. When buying a watercolor set, the rule is buy the most expensive one you can afford. A good watercolor set will last a long time and will not let you down. So here are a few of my favorites. First one is Cretan Color is made in Austria. You can pick up the individual blocks and draw or paint with them, but use wax paper to protect your fingers. Next are the tubes from Lucas. It's a Germany, a German company. If you look at the whole display, every other set in my collection are either cakes or pan forms. Only the Lucas are tubes. Now the tubes are better for dry brush painting. Next, the uh, fan pan. That is a favorite one uh, this last year. There are 42 colors and they're all in a very small space. Then there's the Artesia. It has 36 colors, but if you look closely, I've added an extra row of colors. Then look at the Lucas half pans. Can you believe it? There are 70 colors. Look at the lid. When I unwrapped the half pants, I kept the color paper. I pasted it in the lid so that I need to, if I need to replace that color, I have its name. The porcelain in the middle is for mixing. Next, there are the 24 color opaque watercolor box. As I said earlier, if you take good care of your watercolors, they will take good care of you. Lastly is the Windsor and Newton color sticks. If you look closely, see how I painted the colors in the lid. Uh, using the Daniel Smith watercolor set, you'll be looking at this picture uh, of a hummingbird done by Rennie. She's one of my art students. Um, and during this section, I'm going to have uh, be filming many different styles of watercolor painting. But I want to start with the first section is the painting, watercolor paintings that I have done with the Artesia kit or set. As I said before, watercolor is elusive, swirling, and magical. Watercolor is a freewheeling, happy media, but it can be a battle and a peace treaty in every session. Tension and relief are combined. But there's always a new discovery or two waiting for the practicing watercolorist. Because watercolor is unique in so many ways. Rapid drying time, behavior and mixtures, and tendency to produce fascinating accidents. Color is always a special challenge to the watercolorist. Working with this high-speed medium, the painter cannot hesitate or he or she rarely gets a chance to change their mind. You must know how your colors will behave before you start. With a little chance to correct, change, or work over paintings done in watercolor, the artist's feeling, skills, and approach are laid bare to the viewer's eye. Nothing is hidden or adjusted. Everything is straightforward and honest. It's always a challenge. When, when I first became interested in watercolor painting, I decided, when I decided to become a full-time artist in 1995, in those days I did not know a warm blue from a cool blue, or a staining pigment from one which stayed on the surface. I just blundered along, making mistake after mistake, but all the same, I was intrigued. Ever so often, the dawn would come to me, 
and I realized some new to me truth that should have been apparent all along. And so I would progress a bit. Today is still a process of learning, and I hope it's always going to be that way. In my art videos, I hope I can impart some of what I've learned the hard way so that you can leapfrog over some of my blunders. I hope the videos will help you go farther down the road towards the goals of mastery, knowledge, and excellence in your artwork. Recently, someone asked me if I ever broke the rules needed to be a successful watercolor painter. But before I answer that question, allow me to summarize some of the rules. I think the basic rules for watercolor painting include saving your whites, building your subject one transparent layer at a time, using as few layers as possible, and limiting your op opaques. All of these rules are valid, but if you come out of your comfort zone and bend a few rules, you could find yourself on a path to some creative adventures. But I have to warn you, if you break these rules, you will also be on a slippery slope to disaster. Historically, many well-known watercolorists employed other mediums besides transparent watercolor. Albrecht Durer uh, often combined watercolor and gouache in his work. And John Singer Sargent and Winslow, Winslow Homer both frequently integrated gouache, and then known as body color, wax, and graphite into their watercolors. So did Samuel Palmer, who also incorporated Indian ink, chalk, pencil, and gold leaf into his artwork. These artists set a precedent for exploration and risk-taking in watercolor. Gene Peterson says, Painting creatively is painting without fear. I encourage you to find new ways to add freedom to your methods and techniques, and in turn, this will add interest to your paintings. New ideas and ways of thinking have always been developed because someone dared to ask, what if? What if you create an embellished pattern backdrop for a three-dimension subject like Gustav Klimt? And what if you emphasize flat shapes like Andre Matisse? And what if you try painting on artificial paper surface like George James? To answer your question, yes, I have explored other avenues other than the tried and true ones when working with watercolors. To my delight, I discovered some fascinating effects. To my dismay, some adventures led to a waste of time and materials. Okay. You know, this is the, excite the part of the excitement of being a painter explorer. If you follow the rules, you can achieve what many others have in the past. But if you break the rules, you may discover something to enhance your creativity and your artwork. Who knows, you may even establish new rules for watercolors. What you need to know about watercolor paper, I have here a selection of watercolor paper. Uh, when you try a new paper, no matter what your level of experience, the results can be completely different from what you expect because of the paper's rate of absorption is surface texture and among other things the kind and degree of sizing. So, so what's the question? What is sizing? Sizing is a thin solution of weak glue that affects the painting's bleeding or spreading on the paper. Some watercolor paper has internal and external sizing. Watercolor artists can apply more sizing or soak the paper to remove some of the sizing. You know, in the paper making process, the paper is pressed between rollers. Paper pressed between cold rollers is called cold press and ends up lightly textured. Paper pressed between hot rollers is hot pressed 
and ends up very smooth. A paper that is not pressed between rollers ends up heavily textured and is called rough. The best papers come from cotton and linen fibers. Rice paper also is very good, but it's not made from rice, but from mulberry and other vegetable fibers. All high quality papers are acid free. Now, the paper weights. A paper weight is determined by weighing 500 sheets or ream of the same kind of paper. For example, if the ream of cold pressed watercolor paper weighs 300 pounds, then the paper is referred to 300 pound cold pressed watercolor paper, even if the pad only has 15 sheets. Every watercolorist has his or her own preferences and ways of working. That's what makes watercolor so variable and watercolor techniques so numerous. It's a cooperative relationship, the artist, the watercolor, and the paper. When it works all together, it's like magic. The watercolor paper you do choose does make a difference. This concludes our talk for today. So I encourage you to get out your watercolors and start breaking the rules.